We've been told that makes us the fastest growing company in Hyderabad. Our latest $100 million investment will bring over 1,500 BMS employees together across IT, drug development, and global business operations to enhance our innovation capabilities for patients everywhere. And that adds up to much better problem solving with many more smart people and creating a hub to enable the people we bring into the organization to deliver more medicines to more patients even faster. One final misconception that I want to address is to those who say that what we do is easy. It's not. It's filled with risk-taking, calculation, and ups and downs. And I'll give you one example from my own career. I had the pleasure of working on cell therapy when it was a very nascent technology. No one knew it was going to work. In fact, there were many days we looked across the table and we said it's definitely not going to work. And here we are today, scientific advancements enabling us literally to turn the body into its own medicine. As a leader in cell therapy, we are incredibly excited about these advances, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened incrementally. What I find when I talk to people outside of the industry and sometimes within the industry is that they really don't understand how iterative and incremental the process of innovation is. That's because people like to focus on light bulb moments. But we know it's the everyday moments, the constant moments of looking for a cure or a path forward for patients, and that's the driver of innovation. Scientists toiled for decades to deliver on the promise of immuno-oncology or immunotherapy, harnessing the body's immune system to fight cancer. We were the first to actually make it happen. And the impact has been transformational. It wasn't that long ago that if you were diagnosed with melanoma, you typically had less than 12 months to live. Our first trials in melanoma with our first IO agent, Ibalumumab, showed about a 20-month survival. And some people said, well, that's only an eight-month advance. Not that impressive. But what they didn't realize is that eight months raises the bar. It becomes the new baseline, the new standard against which the next generation of medicines will be measured. And today, we have patients treated with our combination IO therapies that have been alive for six years and some as long as 10 years. The increments matter because they are finally adding up to the cure that newly diagnosed melanoma patients can hope for today. And as the only company with three approved IO agents in the United States, we continue to raise the bar again and again. There are countless other examples of how increments really add up to patient benefit. But what if we could go from incremental to exponential? I am super excited about the promise of AI and other digital tools to help us move faster and with a higher probability of success. It's the accelerant that can help us deliver more medicines even faster. We can talk about the impact of this technology from a couple of different perspectives. First, it can be an accelerant operationally. I'll use BMS examples, but I really think this is something that's happening across the biopharmaceutical industry. With AI tools, we can write protocols for clinical trials much faster. Instead of months, we can do it in days. The magnitude of impact can be the difference between a patient enrolling in a clinical trial or not. And for patients with serious diseases like cancer, that can mean the difference between life and death. And here's the great part. This work in large part will be happening right here in India for BMS. We've used digital tools to model real world data so that we know if our drugs are working, if they're going to be better than the standard of care. We harness real-world data to create virtual cohorts, collections of virtual patients that enable us to reach decisions much faster. That means instead of recruiting 1,000 patients, we only need 500. Instead of taking six years, that trial might only take three years. And within research, we're using AI to make better molecules faster. In fact, 
all of our small molecule trials will be enabled by AI by the end of this year. And again, all of this work is or will be happening right here in India. Those are pretty nice examples of incremental improvements. But what I'm really excited about is how can this make us better at doing what we fundamentally do as a company, applying digital tools to really complicated areas of science to make game-changing advances. Remember how I said that 10 years ago we didn't know if cell therapy would work? Well, today, once a patient is diagnosed with certain blood cancers, we can take cells out of the body and re-engineer those cells to recognize their cancer and then eventually re-infuse them back into the patient. Once inside, those engineered cells attack and kill the cancer. It's a truly remarkable scientific breakthrough. When we first started, there was, there was so much we didn't know. Which patients would benefit? How to design the clinical trials? How to best engineering the manufacturing process? With digital and computational tools, we can now answer all of those questions. And that's enabled us to be a leader in this fast-growing and incredibly exciting field. So much so, we're now moving beyond cancer and taking aim at autoimmune disease with our next generation technology. We call this next generation technology Next T. Using our broad experience in autoimmune diseases such as MS and lupus, we can jump the gap by using AI models trained on thousands of patients to predict features linked to manufacturing success and to safety. And if successful, this will be groundbreaking. We're aiming to provide a functional cure for these types of diseases. And that's never been seen before. And we're focused on making this incredible technology more broadly available, and that includes here in India. I was just talking to a doctor who treats patients with lupus. He told me about a 30-year-old woman with young children at home. And when he provided the lupus diagnosis, the woman was relieved. Now she knew what was causing her to feel incredible joint and muscle pain. She was prescribed a powerful immunosuppressant, which is the standard of care. And then she asked, when do I come off of this medicine? And the physician had to tell her never. Now imagine being 30 years old and finding out you have to take an injectable medicine that puts you at risk for infection for the rest of your life. Being able to offer this woman a functional cure would be life-changing. It would be a major disruption in the standard of care. These are medicines that matter, that bring transformational benefit. But let's not stop there. What if we could improve the standard of care for diagnosis? Obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, is a thickening of the heart muscle wall that makes it difficult for the heart to fill with blood. Untreated, HCM can result in life-threatening irregular heart rhythms and sudden death. Mavicamptin is our game-changing treatment for HCM. It's the first medicine to treat the underlying causes of the disease, not just the symptoms. In fact, just last week, a physician showed me this picture when he was reviewing scans from his patient. And he said, look, you can see that the heart is remodeling itself. But HCM has always been hard to diagnose, even for specialists. It can take an average of two years from the time the patient develops symptoms to when they get a definitive diagnosis and treatment. So the question is, how do we identify patients with HCM sooner? and enable earlier detection. Well, we partnered with VizAI, which is a company that supplies analytics to hospitals that help interpret the thousands of electrocardiograms administered across those systems. With our sponsorship, they developed an algorithm to analyze ECG results looking for very hard to find markers for HCM. And when the algorithm detects possible HCM, it alerts doctors which patients need additional evaluation, and that can save off, shave off significant time to when patients are able to benefit from this medicine. Just last August, the FDA issued clearance for this algorithm, and that's a first. 
It's also a great example of the value of collaborations and partnerships and how they can speed the way to patient solutions. We've always said we don't have a monopoly on great ideas. Working together, we can do so much more than we can do alone, such as tackling really, dif really difficult scientific challenges like Alzheimer's disease, a large and growing unmet need around the world. And while there are now two approved products in the U.S. to treat Alzheimer's, other approaches are urgently needed. Here you see a human brain. There are billions of cells in every single brain. And within each one of those cells, 20,000 genes are expressed at different levels, all leading to this coordinated story in the human brain that we don't fully understand. For example, we know that when certain proteins begin to clump or aggregate in the brain, this leads to inflammation, which in turn causes brain cells to die. And when brain cells die, symptoms begin to emerge, such as memory loss. With AI tools, we can look at each and every one of those cells and sort through the features of protein aggregation that correlate to someone who will develop Alzheimer's disease. We now know that one of the most important proteins that aggregates in the brain is called tau. By clearing tau protein from the brain, we hypothesize that we will prevent inflammation and most importantly, prevent brain cells from dying. We have an anti-tau antibody in early development that, if successful, could potentially prevent cognitive decline and give someone many more years of their memory to, lead, to live happy, healthy, and productive lives. And that's what we think of as truly transformational. And that's what drives us at Bristol-Myers Squibb. These are just a few of the many examples of how digital technologies and tools and frankly, our hearts being in the right place can start to shift the incremental to the exponential. What an incredibly exciting time to be in this industry. We have witnessed tremendous progress in how patients with serious diseases can be treated and respond to transformational medicines. Over the last 100 years, we've gained 25 years of life expectancy through innovation with vaccines, modern medicines, and frankly, really smart and dedicated people doing the hard work. Integrate digital technology, we can add another 25 years of life expectancy in half the time. But of course, the ultimate accelerant is the human in the room. It's people. And we believe that will always be the case talented, passionate people who work with a singular focus to deliver more medicines to more patients even faster. On a personal note, having grown up in a small town in Arkansas in the American South, I could never have imagined that I would be here today in the midst of the monumental advances that we are making as an industry and that are on display here at BioAsia. I was very fortunate, though, to be raised by a large, tight-knit family. Almost every night, we spent time together, not just as an immediate family, but as an extended family and friends and relatives. And those experiences taught me about the value of community, being part of something bigger than the individual, where people have each other's backs. It is my hope that we can remind each other of the importance of finding the best in people and appreciating every contribution that gets made. I am so excited about what we can do together and am honored to be part of the future that is being made right here in India today. Together, we can shape the future of healthcare globally, globally and deliver more for patients. So thank you. To stay informed about the startup ecosystem, subscribe to my startup TV.